I think I think they're really and truly behind it all. They say they're not worried. I think they're really worried. I think they're worried because it's got to affect them in some way. Every single advertisement that goes to a local station instead of RT is money out of their pockets. Same as somebody advertises with another local station instead of ourselves. WCR maybe. That'd be for you. Kingdom. Southwest Radio in Killarney. Mike Donovan in Tralee. Everybody's anticipating that uh, the Minister has stated it's going to be 225 stations in uh, the country. That's one national station, the likes of um, RTE's national setup. There's also going to be one station for each of the 26 counties, I think, with the exception of Dublin, I think, getting two, and maybe Cork getting two. Kerry will get one, that's the Kerry County area, will get one. We have no plans whatsoever, entirely, of going for that particular one. Why do you think someone should advertise on local radio? If you do put an ad in a newspaper, it's got to stand out before anybody will actually take note of it. Um, such as reasons why a lot of people take out full pages to really, if they've got really something good on offer, that costs a lot of money as well. If, if, you, if you advertise on a radio station, not just ourselves specifically, but on any radio station, you're given so many spots for the week, for possibly less, if not the same cost as what it'll cost you on the newspaper, that to me, it'll hammer into people's minds, just sink into their minds. And if it's catchy enough, then it'll catch on. Noel O'Connor, he advertises with a station by the name of Radio Limney in Limerick. And the, the jingle is just Happy Butcher Noel O'Connor. And everybody in Limerick sings Happy Butcher Noel O'Connor. He's happy with that. You won't get that in the newspaper. What do you feel you've achieved after a day's broadcast? Depends. Depends on the day that's in it. If, if for example, I spend 12 hours on the air during the day, which sometimes happens, it can be worse than putting in a week at work. <laughs> Having having worked in a, a factory in Limerick for a long time, I prefer to work a week rather than work 12 hours at this stage because I've done it so often now at this stage. It's just kind of... I mean, you're talking about continually playing 12 hours music records. Mind you, I did hope to go for the, the world record before the actual license came out, which stands at 23 days of non-stop broadcasting and that is something like but the only problem with it is that the Guinness Book of Records are not too keen on letting somebody attempt it because the last person who attempted it I think he lasted around 14 days or something and uh, he died. Why did you yourself personally become a DJ? Uh, first of all as a pastime, a hobby, three of us are involved uh, full-time, um, Tony, Stephen and myself. Um, we started broadcasting, uh, we were all involved in the disco, well I'm, I'm involved in this particular disco in the Ross Day and in Ross Bay. And what we wanted to do was, seeing as we had a transmitter, we were going to broadcast the disco live. So when we brought out the transmitter, we broadcast it, we were very pleased that it was going a bit of a distance. So we decided, right, we'd start up Rocky 103. So we started it up and we were broadcasting away. And an average of six calls a day and uh, a lot of our signals have been lost through mountains we have mountains behind us, we had a sea right in front of us um, it was covering a good area uh, not solid because of the mountains and that it was getting in and out, going in and out of the different areas but where it was hitting it was very strong it was hitting a good, hitting back as far as Listow which is 50 miles from there like so, which is generally what brought us to stole directly after that insofar as we thought that as soon as the signal was coming this way why we try and broadcast back the other way and at least we'd be actually settled in a town the likes of Listol for example um, as has been stated by a lot of people I think it's just general sense that uh, to make a phone call to Dublin first of all will cost you uh, X amount then you're not guaranteed to have your request played and you're certainly not guaranteed to have your record played um, that's apart from getting through to the station itself. Uh, we know our, our, our particular phone lines can be fairly hectic at times that people don't get through either, but they will get through at some stage, and um, what most local stations do their best to do is play the records because they believe that the people have spent their money in good faith, so they play the record in faith as well, In uh, so far as if they're interested in phoning you, that means they're listening. If they're listening, then you're going to get your advertiser, and you get your advertiser pays money, and if he pays the money, it keeps the station going. So it all leads back to just that one little piece, and so far as keeping that listener. You lose that listener, you've got a, a job to fight to get that listener back. Um, that's where all to you losing out. Hello, good afternoon, Rocky. That's right, yeah? 
uh, it will be a general problem. Yeah. This is going to be the hardest aspect of this build to follow. The hardest part of the build will be the, the license, the producing of the money for the license. Um, the minister, it's anticipated, will look for 25% at least of your advertising income as the license fee. That'll be your yearly contribution to the state as such. Um, at, at the moment, with regards Rocky 103, if you took 25% of our advertising revenue at the moment, um, we'd have to generally forget about what do you say to allegation to the allegations that have been made that local radio is interfering with services like the Gardaí, Fire Brigade and air traffic control? Um, air traffic control, I think, is one of the most serious, um, obviously, if a, if a plane gets diverted in any way, which is thanks to a, an illegal radio station's signal, then that can't be um, taken for granted. Um, we never, we never go. To, I don't think any of the stations go out deliberately to cause any interference. All it takes is a phone call to the station, they'll try and sort it out. If the station doesn't sort it out, hence they should be taken to whatever proceedings are necessary. What advice would you give to someone setting up their own local radio station? Number one, you have to have a full interest in radio and in people in general. If you're interested in just doing radio just to try and make um, money out of it, then you might as well forget about it. Not because you won't make any money out of it, because you won't do a good job. <laughs> now we're asked to say hello to the camera crew who are with us at the moment, with all the bright lights and all the cameras, etc, etc. And well, I'm sure you'll get to see the finished product eventually, especially if you're in St. Michael's College. We're bound to be showing it up there. <laughs> oh, I'll be shamed. I will indeed. Say hello to all the boys anyway, and uh, especially mention for all the fifth years in St. Michael's. Looking for this one, and uh, never before played on the radio station, I'm told. Well, this is my first time playing this particular one anyway. It's U2, it's called The Three Sunrises, and this is what it sounds like. Have a listen. Well, then with U2, and The Three Sunrises, very specially for all the fifth years. Indeed, all the gangs at Michael's College, and that came from all the lads who are working hard today. <laughs> 25 minutes away from 5, time for a look at the entertainment guide. As brought to you every Thursday, Friday, Saturday and Sunday at 8.30, 1.30, 4.30 4.30 6 6.30. Quilter's Bar is to be found at 83 Church Street, Listowel, for a wide variety of music on our jukebox at the touch of a button, or deal a quiet game of pool in warm, friendly surroundings. That's Quilter's Bar, 83 Church Street in Listowel. The Town Tavern is located at the top of William Street in Listowel. It offers the best value for drink in town, and it also has a pool table for your enjoyment. So for fast, friendly and efficient service, it has to be the Town Tavern at the top of William Street in Listowel. The Harp and Line Bar can be found in Church Street in Listowel. Now this week what you can do at the Harp and Line Bar, for every drink that you buy you get a ticket free for a draw. The draw takes place every Sunday night, but uh, if you have a ticket you must be in the bar on Sunday night when the draw has been made. If your ticket comes out you claim your £20 there and then. If you're not there another ticket will be drawn and somebody else will win the £20. Alright, so if you've got yourself a ticket any time during the week at the Harp and Line Bar, Drop along next Sunday night, and if your name comes out and you're there, you win yourself that £20, alright? That's at the Harford Lion Bar, and of course they're also serving soup and sandwiches daily. Harford Lion Bar, Church Street, in Listowel. Joe Broder's Bar is in Lower William Street, in Listowel, for the best in entertainment in town. When I call into Joe's, and don't forget every Thursday night it's dart session night, and you can win yourself a voucher. All entries are welcome, that's all at Joe Broder's Bar, Lower William Street, in Listowel. Cronin's Bar is in Market Street, Listowel, just opposite the Mart, and they're now offering soup, sandwiches and teas on market days, and there's always the best point in town as well. And don't forget our usual traditional and Irish spot on Saturday nights. That's all at Cronin's Bar, Market Street in Listowel. Fitzgerald's Bar this coming Friday night. Music is provided by Mick McConnell, and on Saturday night, music is provided by Rotation 2. That's Rotation 2 on Saturday night. Murphy's Bar is located at 35 William Street, Listowel. And if you'd like a quiet drink in the front of the warmth of an open fire, and also pool and darts available, and drinks at a price you can afford, Murphy's Bar, 35 William Street in Listowel. Now finally for the moment let me remind you with regards to Spectral Pub Quiz, the draw for the next round has been made. Next Monday night, John Ors takes on Curly Connors 
The Harp and Line take on the Shabine. Joe Matney's are at home to the Shamrock. And Colleen's are at home to Jed Carroll's. On Wednesday night, Jerry Murphy's against Tim Kennelly's. Grogan's against the Finbar. Uh, Joe Broder's against Mary B's. And Fitzgerald's against John B's. And the away matches in that particular games or those particular competitions take place the following Monday and Wednesday respectively. All right. So if you're playing next Monday, you're away to that particular team that you're playing the following Monday and Wednesday, the same thing. All right. That's it. That's the entertainment guide for the moment. We'll have another look at the entertainment guide at half past six, 22 minutes away from five o'clock. <laughs> he didn't even move his hands. <laughs> I'll tell you what, Samuel.